is Tiffany. Today we're going to talk about roots. Finding the roots of a function. Some things to keep in mind. When you solve for the roots of a function, you are looking for the place on a graph where the function hits the x-axis. At that place, the y value is equal to zero. To find the roots of a function, you will need to find the factors of a trinomial. Then you need to set that answer equal to zero. Then you need to solve for x. Your answer will be in the format of x equals a number. You can check your answer to see if what you got is correct by graphing the equation and checking to see where the graph crosses the x-axis. Before we begin, let's make sure you know how to factor numbers. If you have to list the factors for a number like 36, you just start with 1 because it's the first counting number. And you say 1 times 36 is 36. And then I go to the next counting number, which is 2. So it's 2 times 18 also gives me 36. Then 3 times 12 can give you 36. 4 times 9 can give you 36. And 6 times 6 can give you 36. 5 didn't go into 36 evenly, so I didn't write it. Because 6 times 6 lists itself twice, that's my cue to know that I've written down all of the factors. Now, if you remember, whenever you're multiplying factors, if you make both factors negative, they still equal a positive. So I can turn all of these positive factors into their negative form, and it would still give me 36. So what that means is all of these could be converted to their negative version, and you'd still get 36 because a negative times a negative is a positive. Now let's do the same for 16. 1 times 16 gives you 16, 2 times 8 gives you 16, 4 times 4 gives you 16, and because 4 is a double, that means I've listed all of these. I can also list the negative version of all of these factors. So now I have the negative version of all of these factors because all of these would total 16. Now I'm going to do that same step for the number 64, and I have 1 times 64. 2 times 32. So these are all of the positive and negative factors of 64. Let's take a look at example number one. Example number one says find the roots of this function. So the first thing I need to do is find the factors of the function. Well, when I look at this particular function, I can see that this is one of those special types of trinomials. This is a perfect square trinomial. And I can tell that because my A value is a perfect square and my z value is a perfect square. So I actually can take like a shortcut in the factoring on this particular problem. The 64x squared turned into 8x times 8x. And as far as the z, that turns into two times two. And so now I've just multiplied my 8x times my two when I got 16x. And then I multiplied my 8x times my two when I got 16x. And if I were to add those two things together, I would get 32x but I need a negative 32x because I have a negative here, okay? So what I know that I need to do is add a negative sign over here in front of these two factors. And when you do that, when you multiply, your 16x turns into negative 16x and then negative 16x. And so when you add these two things together, it ends up being a negative 32x. So that is exactly the term that I need to see. So because we have our factors correct, I can go ahead and turn these into my binomials. And so this is going to be 8x minus 2 and 8x minus 2. Now what I need to do is set both of these things equal to 0. And because they're the same, I really only have to do this next part once. I just need 8x minus 2 equals 0. And now I'm going to solve for x. So I add 2 to both sides. And I have 8x equals 2. Now I divide by 8, and I end up with x equals 1, 4. So because both of my binomials were the exact same, because this is a perfect square trinomial, I don't need to plug the second binomial into 0 because I'm going to get the exact same thing. So if you remember, I explained that a root is actually where your graph 
hits the zero mark on the y-axis. So if you wanted to check your answer, what you could actually do is graph it. And as you can see, my graph touches the x-axis exactly where x equals one fourth. So if this is my first space and this is the number one right here, I can see that this point where this parabola hits the x-axis is exactly at one fourth. And something else I wanna point out is sometimes people ask like, why do they call these roots or why do they call these zeros? I don't know for sure, but I always suspect it is because if this x-axis were the ground and you were just walking along the ground, I'm gonna draw a little person even. If you're just walking along the ground and this graph were a tree, you would call this area of the graph the roots. Like think about it, when you're next to a tree, the part of the tree that hits the ground is like really what you would refer to as the roots. Sometimes the roots even come out like, you know, like, oh, there's roots of the tree. And they're where? They're right at the ground level, which is where y equals zero, okay? So that's what I think they call it roots, but I don't know for sure. Another thing is roots can also be referred to as zeros. So sometimes a book or a worksheet might say how to find the zeros of a function. Now let's take a look at example number two. Example number two says find the roots of this function. So I need to find the factors of this function. And this particular function is not a perfect square trinomial. So I need to just go ahead and start by finding the factors of 12. So just like we did on an earlier screen, we're gonna calculate what times what gives you 12. So I have one times 12, two times six, three times four, and that's it. Now I'm looking for a combination of two numbers, two of these factors over here that when I add them together, I need to get seven. And I can see right away that that's gonna be the three and the four, okay? Now this particular problem was all positive. See, there's a plus on here and there's a plus on here. So I knew that I wasn't gonna need to get the negative version of the factors of 12. I just wanna point that out so you understand why I didn't write the negatives. I can see that I'm not gonna need anything to be negative in this problem because everything's positive. If one of these symbols were negative, then somewhere one factor is gonna have to be negative. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that I am ready to write my two binomials. So I'm gonna have x plus three and x plus four. I wrote the plus three and the plus four because I got those straight from our factors. Both of these are positive, so it's gonna be a plus. If one of these were negative, then it would be x minus that number. So now, because I have my factors, I can set those equal to zero. So now I need to calculate what x equals for this binomial, and I need to calculate what x equals for this one. And you do that by setting them equal to zero, like I said. So I'm gonna subtract three from both sides, and over here, we have x equals negative three. Then I'm gonna subtract four from both sides, and over here, we have x equals negative four. Now I'm gonna graph this particular function, meaning graph this. You can put it in a graphing calculator if you want even. And from the picture, you will be able to see where your graph hits the x-axis. This particular graph needs to hit at the negative three mark on the x-axis and it needs to also hit at the negative four mark. Let's take a look. Here it is. I can see that negative four is right here and my graph does in fact hit that exact point. And my negative three is right here and my graph does hit exactly at that point. So that means I solved this problem correctly. And again, if this were the ground, and I'm, I'm using green because it's like grass, right? If you're standing here walking along and if this graph were a tree, this is what you would refer to as the roots, right? That's where I believe the name comes from. They're also referred to as zeros because it's where the y-axis equals zero. See, at this point, the y-axis is zero. So everything along this line, the value of y would be zero when you're dealing with ordered pairs. Now, let's take a recap. When you solve for the roots of a function, you are looking for the place on a graph where the function hits the x-axis. At that place, the y value is equal to zero. To find the roots of a function, you will need to find the factors of the trinomial, set that answer equal to zero, 
and then solve for x. Your answer will be in the format of x equals a number. You can check your answer to see if what you got is correct by graphing the equation and checking to see where the graph crosses the x-axis. Now you try. Comment with the correct answer below. What are the roots of the trinomial x squared plus 8x plus 16? Once you calculate your answer, head over to my website and click on video answers to see if your answer is correct. SuperEasyMath.com Don't forget to like and subscribe. Did you find this video helpful? You can support this channel by donating to Super Easy Math through PayPal. There's a link to it in the description section below this video and on the Super Easy Math YouTube cover photo.